Hello, in this video I'm going to go over the basics of how to conduct an analysis of covariance and COBA in just another stats program. So first let me get my data set open. And in this data set is pretty bare bones. I have a column for my participant variable a column for the covariate, a column for the independent variable, which has three levels in this example, and there's only one independent variable, and I have a column for the dependent variable. So I'll go to the ANOVA drop-down list, and you'll notice one of those is labeled as ANCOVA, I'll click on that, and to start, I'll put my outcome variable or my dependent variable into the box labeled dependent variable, and I will put my independent variable into the fixed factors box. That's where any manipulated categorical variables will go, and I will put my covariate, my statistical control variable, into the covariance box. Now, I want to make some adjustments to the analysis and uh, select some options. So I'm just going to ignore the output that's there uh, for now. Uh, the first thing you might want to do is to test the assumption of homogeneity of regression which is basically that your CV and your IV, your covariate and your independent variable, do not uh, interact with each other, do not have a statistically significant interaction. So to do that, you need to specify the uh, interaction. So to do that, you would hold down Shift and select both of them, and then the interaction term gets entered into the equation as one of the effects that will be tested. Uh, we probably don't want to use type 3 sum of squares because type 3 sum of squares will test that interaction after testing the IV and then the CV and then the interaction, which is actually the, the usual way you would want to test the interaction, but in this context, the interaction is most important. So it is customary to actually test just the interaction. And to do that in like SPSS, you can just specify the interaction and remove the other uh, lower order variables from it. Uh, but in just another stats program, you can't do it that way, but what you can do is switch to type 1 sum of squares, which tests the effects hierarchically, and you can specify, drag it in the order in which you want them tested. So that'll test the interaction first, and we'll just take a peek at that interaction, and we'll see that it's nowhere near anything we want to be concerned about, so we will assume that we've met the homogeneity of regression slopes assumption so we can now take that out of the analysis. Now we're going to leave this as type 1 sum of squares so we will test this um, with the CV entered first into the equation which is the typical way of doing this. Now some programs will by default as you saw uh, use type 3 sum of squares, so we want to use type 1 and enter the CV first, which will make a difference because it'll let the CV, the, the covariate, take its bite of the dependent variable's variance, and then it'll assess what the IV does above and beyond the covariate, which is the ordinary way of thinking about an analysis of covariance. So we'll We've got the model specified the way that we want it to be specified. Under assumptions, we can test the homogeneity of variance assumption. We can also look at 
normality plots of the residuals. They're not going to be very pretty in this data set given the rather small sample size. We can look at those anyway. And as far as our descriptives, we're going to want to look at the adjusted means. So we'll get the adjusted means under likes to bounce around on this computer. All right, under additional options, we will ask for the marginal means, which will be the adjusted means. We can also, while we're at it, why not? We can also ask for sort of sort of what we similar here. There's the means themselves. Descriptive statistics, there we go. And effect sizes, we'll stick with eta squared for now. And let's take a look at what we have in our output. So we see here that our covariate is significantly related. The p-value is quite low, so there would be uh, seven zeros a decimal point and then seven zeros and then a nine. So the p-value is quite low. The eta squared is 0.29. And then we have our independent variable, which we'll remember has three levels. And that also has qu quite a low p-value and quite a high f-value and an, an enormous effect size. So we would conclude that there uh, is in fact a statistically significant uh, effect of our independent variable on the adjusted means after controlling for our covariate. Now looking at the assumption of equality of variances, the Levine's test for that, uh, we, we don't seem to have any trouble with that. The p-value is high, so we will not be concerned about violating that assumption. Here, the, uh, if the dots are along the line, it means that our residuals are more or less normal. We do see some deviations from the line, but given the rather small sample size here, um, we wouldn't expect a perfect normal distribution. So I'll be happy that we have reasonable normality of error. And now here we have our marginal means. So these are the adjusted means. So these are after controlling for the covariate. What is the uh, expected score per condition on the three levels of our independent variable? So for level one, the expected score is, uh, the expected mean score is 98.62. For level two, it's 84.81. And for level three, it's 75.90. Uh, we uh, might also be interested in the un unadjusted means, which are actually pretty close, reasonably similar to the um, means after we adjust for the covariate. So the covariate is only causing a very minimal impact in the means, and the relative order of the means is still the same. So we might also... Now that we've reviewed the results of the ANCOVA, we note that there are three levels of the independent variable, and we're rejecting the null. So we're saying there's at least one difference, but we want to see where the differences are. So we want to go to our post hoc tests, enter our independent variable in the box there, Get this to stop bouncing around. We'll stick with the two key test. And while we're at it, we can ask for an effect size. Why not? And now we can scroll and find our post hoc test. So we see that there is a significant difference between group one and group two. Group one has a significantly higher mean than group two, and it has an enormous Cohen's D value. Uh, there is also one is higher than three with an impossible, almost impossibly enormous Cohen's D value for the effect size. 
and the Tukey adjusted p-value is incredibly low. Um, and then also we have group two is significantly higher than group three on the DV. And we see that that also has an enormous effect size and a low p-value. So you can kind of tell these are made up data because the effect sizes are are, are so gigantic. But uh, that's basically how you would conduct an ANCOVA in just another stats program. It's a pretty nifty program that allows you to do analyses uh, rather quickly and has the sort of options that we usually look for when we're running analyses and such as effect sizes and p-values and confidence intervals and it's easy to uh, to some degree anyway to customize the analysis for the output that you want so I thank you for listening to this brief tutorial I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did don't forget to like and subscribe and to buy all my merch